Hey guys, so this video is just going to be a quick little tutorial on how to use rate casting. You may have heard of rate casting before, you may not have, but either way, it's a really useful concept that you can use in a lot of different ways to do a lot of different things. So the basic concept of rate casting is you have a start point. So let's represent that start point with this here part. And so this will be our start point. I'll also name it start point. So this is the start point of the rate cast, right? And so this over here, this will be our ending point. So essentially what a rate cast does is it starts at the starting point and it goes towards the ending point and it detects if it hits anything in between. So for example, say I had a part right here in the middle and the part was tall enough that it would hit the part. So essentially it starts right here and it goes towards, it starts at the green part and it goes towards the red part, but in the process it would hit this wall and it would stop right here. And then you could get the position that it hits the wall, you could get like the face of the wall and you could like reflect the ray off of the wall. You could, you could, you can do a lot of different things with that. I'll show a few different examples. So now using the start point and using the end point, I've created a very simple script, it only consists of 10 lines. Essentially what it does, it gets the start point or the start point part and it gets the end point part. And then using those, we configure the start position and the end position and then we do we create a while loop and we repeatedly uh, create a raycast and we send a raycast using workspace colon raycast and this if we if I were to even just go out here it shows th these are the parameters so there's the origin which is a vector 3 there's the direction which is a vector 3 and there's the raycast parameters so I'll get into the raycast parameters later for now we'll just look at the fir first two parameters, which are vector threes. So for the origin, that's where you want the rate to start. So we want the origin to be equal to the start or to the position of this green part. And then for the uh, direction, the direction isn't necessarily the end position. So we can't just do direction. We can't just set the direction to the position of this part. But the, what the direction is, the direction is Essentially, the direction is added on to the origin to figure out where it ends. So if you did if you did this, and this was your direction, that's five studs on the y-axis. And so essentially, it'll start at the green part, and the raycast will go up five studs. It won't go to the position 0, 050, 0, it'll go up five studs from the or from the origin position. So in order to get so like considering that in order to get from this position to this position, so essentially imagine the direction equals or the end position equals start equals the origin plus the direction, right? So so the origin plus the direction is the end position, right? And so in order to get in order to use the end position and get the direction from the end position, if you do a little bit of algebra, essentially you subtract origin from both sides. And on the left side, now you just have direction. And on the right side, you have end position minus origin. And essentially, and so then using this simple formula, if we want the direction, and we have, and what we have is the end position and the origin, we can just do end position minus origin, which would be this. And so now when I do that, all right. So then, so workspace dot work, workspace colon raycast has a return. It returns a raycast result, and so then I'm going to print that result to see if it hits something essentially. And so now you can see it's it's spamming nil because it's not hitting anything. It's going from this part to this part and it's not hitting anything. So then when I walk between the two parts, you can see it starts printing printing a bunch of stuff. And so if we stop and we look at what it's printing, it says left lower arm. So that's the part that's the part in my character that it's hitting. This is the position that it hits that part. This is the this is the direction of the face that it hits. And so using that, using a bunch of math with like vector dot or something like that then you can actually reflect a ray and you can like if you have like a bullet or something you can have the bullet ricochet off of a 
the surface. And then it also gives us the material. Those are the four things that it gives us. The instance that it hits, the position it hits, the normal of the face, and then the material. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the third parameter. So the third parameter is the Raycast parameters. All right, so essentially, if you create a new object over here, local params equals Raycast params dot new, then you can do params, and it has a bunch of different properties that you can set. Then you put that as the third parameter. So this Raycast dot, Raycast params dot new would be the third parameter. But within this, we want to change the parameters of the Raycast. So we can change the filter descendants instances. So essentially using this, there's other things you can do too, but what I mainly use is filter descendants instances and filter type. Those are the main two properties that I ever use. So essentially, using this Raycast params, you can filter out certain parts, right? So if we have a part right here, and then we have another part right here, and so let's say, let's say this part is like maybe somewhat invisible or mostly invisible. And say we have an NPC and want, and want that NPC to be like looking around and we're using Raycast to detect if it sees players or, or something like that, right? And so I'll say this is where the NPC is and say it's looking this way. Normally, if we were to Raycast, it would hit this part. Even, even though this part is invisible, the NPC theoretically would be able to see through it. But since the part's still there, the Raycast is going to hit the part. And if the player is right here, if this is the player, then the Raycast won't get to the player because it'll hit this part instead and it won't see the player. But if we add this part to the ignore list or to some kind of ignore list, then the Raycast will actually go through that part and it'll hit the player and it'll actually detect the player. All right, so now I've added these two parts inside of the model of the model here just for organization purposes and so then I've, I've accessed those parts and put them in variables in the script and then I've added I've set these two properties so filter descendants instances is a list of all the parts or all of all the things that you want to filter out but you can also put a model in this so if you were, if you wanted to put the entire character of a player then you could put like comma char or character or whatever you have for the variable name you can put the entire character in there and it'll it'll ignore everything inside of that character that's why it's called filter descendants it's instances it filters that instance as well as anything inside of that instance and so but then this next property filter type is how we want the filter to actually affect it so we can use enum.raycastfiltertype.blacklist, which means anything in here will be ignored by the Raycast. But if we do whitelist, anything in here, so everything is ignored by the Raycast except for what's in here. So this is the only thing that's not going to be ignored. So then if I go inside the, the local result equals workspace Raycast, that's the origin, that's the, the direction. And then we add the params. Well, actually, let's let's test it without the parameters first. So this is the normal Raycast without without the parameters. So theoretically, it should go from this point and hit this part, right? And this part is the transparent part. So as you can see, it prints that it hits the transparent part. And so now, if we add params, it's going to add this filter to it. Now you can see it hits the player part right here. It hits this instead. And it completely ignores this part. And now if I walk into it, of course, it'll hit me because I haven't set it to ignore me. But essentially, using this, you can filter out specific items that you don't want to interfere with your Raycast while still having your Raycast work for everything else. But then there's one more thing that I want to mention. The parameters aside, there's one thing I did off camera that I didn't exactly show you guys or explain. So essentially, we have the end point and we have the starting point. If I get rid of these two, if I get rid of all that stuff, so this is what we had before, right? Just the basic Raycast, no parameters, just these two parts, the start point and the end point. And so 
when I walk when I walk over here in between them, then it detects me and it prints that I'm it prints whatever part of me that it hits. But then here's the thing though. Normally, if it's going from so the position of a part, right? The position of a part is based on the center of the part. So the position of this part isn't right here, it isn't right here, it's right in the center, right? So sometimes you need to account for that when you're using the position of a part to do something. And so essentially the raycast starts from inside of the part and it goes to the inside of this part. So you'd think it would detect the green part because it starts inside of the green part, right? It starts inside of this part. But since it starts inside of it, for some reason I guess it doesn't actually detect it. But it will go all the way over to this red part and it will detect the red part. And so say, what if you don't want it to detect the red part because you want, if, you, if it doesn't, if there's not anything between these two parts, maybe you want it to print nil or you, you don't want the result to exist. What I did to make so it doesn't do that, because if you notice, when I, when I test it, it just, it prints nil until I walk between them. And this raycast never hits either of these two parts. But the reason for that is because of this property called can query. So if I turn, so I essentially what I did, uh, yeah, so essentially what I did is I turned all three of these off. I mean, the only thing I really, only thing I really needed to turn, the only things I really needed to turn off were can collide and can query. If I have can, if I have can collide on, it makes so I can't change can query. And what I need to change is can query. But basically, I don't know the entirety of this property. It's an, it's, it's a new property, I'm pretty sure. But if I turn those back on, and I hit play, you'll notice suddenly now it's hitting the end point like I was saying earlier. It's actually hitting this point rather than not hitting anything at all. But it's not hitting this point because it starts on the inside of that and I guess it only tracks when it hits the part, when it hits the part from the outside. But anyway, then I walk between them and it suddenly starts hitting me instead. But when I walk away, it hits the end point. With can query, it's almost as if the part isn't there. The only purpose that the part serves when can query is false is for visual effects. But you, know, you can't collide with it. You can't. The raycasts don't hit it, which is why I turned it off. So the raycasts don't hit the parts. You can walk through the parts, but using that, that's why. That's that's why it doesn't print this the endpoint whenever I'm not between the two parts. So that's about it. That's about it for this video. I tried to make it a good bit shorter than most of my videos since I know I have a bad habit of going in detail and a lot of things that I don't necessarily need to and I kind of get off topic a lot of the time. So I've been, I'm trying to get my videos a little bit shorter, a little bit more enjoyable to watch. Not so much like a five hour study session or something. But So I hope, I hope this video was enjoyable. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions about how raycasting works. Or maybe if you could use it for a certain thing or anything about it, just, just ask me in the comments below.